Jesus. So here's the lesson. Don't what? Worry about anything. Instead, what? Pray about everything. That's what the Bible says. So do you need to worry? Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Question, how much will worry accomplish? How much then will prayer accomplish? Everything. Prayer moves the arm of omnipotence. Let me read that to you, with you. This is from Christ's Object Lessons, page 172 and 3. If you have the book, right, mark it down. Christ's Object Lessons, 172 and 3 says, Prayer moves the arm of omnipotence. Prayer has subdued kingdoms. Has worry ever done that? Has it? No. Prayer has wrought righteousness. Did worry ever work out righteousness? No. Prayer has ordained promises, obtained promises. Has worry? No. Prayer has stopped the mouth of lions. Did worry ever do that? You're getting kind of quiet out there. Have I run out of time already? You haven't fallen asleep yet, have you? <laughs> Prayer has quenched the violence of fire. Did worry ever do that? Hello? <laughs> Prayer has turned to, f to flight the armies of the aliens. This is, of course, from Hebrews. Worry never did any of that. Prayer has done all of that. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. If we surrender our lives to his service, to God's service, we can never. How often is never? Never, <laughs> never is never. We can never be placed in a position for which God has not made provision. Can you say Amen. If you've given yourself to God, you will, God will never allow you to be put in a situation that he hasn't made provision for. So then do you need to worry? We really don't need to worry about anything. We sing this song. You're familiar with this song. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Why worry when you can pray? Take your worries, your anxieties, your fears to God. Mary Crowley once said this, Every evening... I turn my worries over to God. He's going to be up all night anyway. <laughs> Have you ever laid awake at night worrying about something? Why not turn it over to God? He's going to stay up all night. You don't need to stay up worrying. It's going to take away from your sleep and you'll be less prepared to face tomorrow's trials. Let's move on to the next pill in our prescription for worry. F is for focus. A, acquaint yourself with God and his promises. I is implore. T stands for trust in the word of God. If God says it, we believe it, that settles it. Trust in the word of God. Again, here's that statement we read earlier. That I may know him, page 226 says, the work of faith means more than we think. It means genuine reliance upon the naked word of God. By our actions, we are to show that we believe that God will do just as he has said. When we worry, what are we showing by our actions? We're showing unbelief. We're showing we don't believe that God is going to do just as he has said. God has said, I will provide how much of our needs? All of our needs. If you're taking notes, you can put out a verse. We won't look it up, but put it in your notes today. Psalms 37, verses 3 through 7. Trust in the Lord. And verse 7 says, rest in the Lord. That sounds the opposite of worry. When you're worrying, you're not resting in the Lord. Trust in the Word of God. That's the T in our prescription for worry. Philippians 4, verse 19. Let's read it again together. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's what God's word says. Do you believe it? 
Do you really believe it? Live it. Show it by your life, by your actions, you believe the Word of God. Let's move on to the H now. In the five pills for anxiety. H stands for heaven first. Heaven, where does that come from? Heaven first. Is there a text that Jesus talked about putting heaven first? Where is that verse? It comes from Matthew 6, verses 33 and 34. Turn there, please, in your Bible. Matthew 6, verses 33 and 34. Heaven first. Seek ye, well, we'll read it here. Some of you could probably quote it. Matthew 6, 33 and 34. Are you there now? All right, sounds like most of you are. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek you when? First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and how much? All, all these things shall be what? Added unto all what things? Well, if you read verses 31, 32, it says what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear, the bills, in other words, all the things that the world is seeking after, all the worries. God says, if you put me first, seek first my kingdom, my righteousness, what will God do? He's going to add all those other things. Now, if that's true, it is true, then we, do we need to worry? Notice the next verse. Verse 34 says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow. What does that mean? That means don't worry about tomorrow. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. God has not given you grace for tomorrow. In fact, Deuteronomy 33, verse 25 says, For as your days, so shall your strength be. If you worry about tomorrow, you know what you're doing? You're bringing tomorrow's problems, tomorrow's trials, tomorrow's anxieties into today. You haven't even been given enough strength for those. God gives you only the strength for the day. So if you bring in tomorrow's worries, do you have strength to deal with them? No. And when you get to tomorrow, you're already going to be wore out because you face tomorrow's worries Today, or you thought you could face them. You worried about them today. So when you get to tomorrow, you're being more tired than you would have been if you hadn't worried. Jesus says, put me first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, I don't want you to answer this, but I want you to answer in your own heart. Ask yourself today, am I in my life seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Answer that in your own heart. If you are, you have nothing to worry about. If you're not, that's what you need to worry about. <laughs> because if we're not seeking God first and his kingdom first, then we might miss out. That's worth worrying about. But if you're seeking first God's kingdom, God's righteousness, you have nothing that you need to worry about. So here we have our prescription for anxiety. F stands for focus. Focus on the positive. A stands for acquaint. Acquaint yourself with God and with God's wonderful promises. You need to study God's word. Memorize God's word so that when these intruders, these trespassers come into your life, the worries, what are you going to do with them? Shoot them with the word of God. I should encourage you, I will encourage you today, memorize the word of God. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee, and it doesn't say this, and that I might not worry. <laughs> I added that. You know, I've been trying this year to memorize a verse a day. I did some calculating. If I had memorized one verse of Scripture every day since I first became a Christian, I would have in memorized the entire New Testament by now. I thought, what a shame. It's not hard to memorize one verse a day. I got these little cards. You drive down the highway, you st and I don't do it when you're driving. Well, you stop at the stoplight. How long does it take for some of the, I know some of these stoplights, they seem like they never turn green. And you know what I found? I found I was no, more, no longer fretting when the light was red and I was in a hurry. Because I had my verse there, and so I was memorizing Scripture. 